Okay. All right. Turning it over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, I, this is my first time doing one of these. So it's, I mean, I, I've done the whole Zoom, go over my presentation information about us before, but never uh, with this kind of audience. So uh, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you about Connect America, what we do, how we can help seniors, uh, especially keep seniors, help seniors stay in their homes for as long as they possibly can. Um, uh, and just kind of go over that. And uh, if you guys, if anyone has any questions, I would be more than happy to uh, you know, answer them and, and, and kind of go in any directions that uh, you know, everyone feels is best. So um, it's a friendly group just to relax and have yeah. fun. <laughs> We're not vicious. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I, I, had a, I had a testy uh, meeting earlier this morning. So my. Uh, Did you? <laughs> Yeah, but it wasn't work related. It was just, uh, we, we bought furniture from a horrible furniture company. I've been arguing with them uh, for weeks now about removing it, taking it back. And my uh, my blood pressure's up a little. <laughs> well, but, we uh, promise we'll be nice. <laughs> this should really seem easy now. <laughs> <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> we are, as the screen says, the largest independent provider of um, connected care services, which really means uh, personal emergency response systems, medication management or, or alarms, and uh, telehealth remote patient monitoring. Uh, when I joined the company about five years ago, we were active basically like the mid-Atlantic area, New England, uh, as far south as Virginia, and as far west as Iowa. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've expanded into uh, 37 or 38 states. Uh, and that's doing work with like state governments, MCOs and states. Uh, our, you know, our reach is nationwide, um, but you know, we really do business with, when I say states, I, I mean uh, like triple A's in the state or MCOs or some kind of contracted government business in the state. Um, we're based in, you know, with this national um, reach, we're still based in Ballacanwood right now. It's our national headquarters. We have a shipping office in Broomall with all that uh, very well connected to the Philadelphia area and Pennsylvania as a whole. So always kind of feel like a Philadelphia area company um, and based on where we're located, people in this area just get better service because you have me locally, you have all our leadership local and you know, our under normal times, non COVID, you know, any one of our VPs would go out and install a unit for somebody in the area just because they're free or they're nearby. So you really get that extra care when you're close to us. Um, part of our expansion, this isn't really that important for, for people around here, but part of our expansion is these are some of the companies nationwide that we are, our brands were um, Connect America is our national brand, but some of these are smaller companies that we own in other states. Uh, Be Safer at Homes in Kansas, uh, my personal response is in Florida. Actually, Be Safe at Homes, New England, Home Buddies, the Midwest, especially Kansas and Nebraska. So they're part of our brand and, and part of our growth. Um, you know, we part, like I said, we work with MCOs, hospital networks, uh, Medicare. We're working on getting more in with Medicare Advantage plans uh, and being a part of those. Uh, charities like Easter Seals uh, and ALS. Um, group we worked with. So, you know, we've worked with uh, a variety of uh, partners and providers. Like uh, Eddie's a big hospital network in New York. They're one of the first uh, partners to really buy into us and, and one of our bigger uh, partners still to this day. Um, you know, AmeriHealth is very, AmeriHealth and Keystone First, very big in Pennsylvania, obviously. Uh, but, you know, some of the other people that we work with. And we, all our calls go to a response center. We have uh, a main response center in central New York. We have backups in California and Utah, just in case there's ever to be any kind of emergency or any kind of shutdown there. Everything's redundant. The call center is one of the most impressive um, buildings I've ever been into. It has attention to detail like you would never see, like I've never seen. Um, this is a brief picture. I don't know how well it can be seen, but the way the operator's partitions are, you're not going to hear the person next to you speak, but you can have like a supervisor central to all these desks who hear everything everyone's saying. 
because all the sound bounces off the, the, the specific class and the way it's angled. It, it's pretty incredible. It's also in Syracuse or just outside of Syracuse. And, and they locate there because of a population center of 100,000 or more that has the least chance of a natural disaster that would take out power anywhere in the United States. They did all that research just to find that they want to be in Syracuse. Now, obviously, a blizzard is not a natural disaster because they get a thousand feet of snow a year. One of the uh, ways that they keep people from tracking snow into the building is they have heated sidewalks all over. So if you have snow on you while you're walking in, it melts as you're walking in off your feet, off your pants, whatever. Then there's a second door that won't let you in the building until they scan you and you're dry enough. So you're not tracking any snow. Not that it has anything to do with the calls. I just think that's fascinating. And I wish I can have heated sidewalks all around my house so I don't have to shovel snow in the winter. But it's neither here nor there. Um, they also uh, train all their operators as EM, all their operators are trained EMTs and they go out of their way to hire veterans. What that does is if you have a panicked grandmother on the phone, the person on the other line is going to be calm, is going to reassure them and is not gonna panic themselves. They're not gonna be some inexperienced kid who when you hear someone say, I fall, on, I can't get up, I need help. They're not gonna panic, they're gonna stay calm. Them staying calm is gonna help grandma stay calm and they're going to stay on the line with them until help arrives. Whether it be a neighbor, whether it be a family member, whether it be uh, ambulance or police or whomever, they're going to stay on the line and never leave that person alone. So we have, as I mentioned, we have three bases of business. We have personal emergency response systems, which are the traditional, I fall and I can't get up. I talk into the monitor, they, I get help that way. We have remote patient monitoring and telehealth, which can measure weight, blood pressure, weight, blood pressure, uh, blood sugar, um, or the big ones. But, and then they would measure all those and send those directly to a doctor or nurse group so that they can look at your readings, look at everyone's readings for the day and, and uh, balance their home nursing and their care based on where people are at with uh, the readings for the day and, and help, uh, you know, kind of catch problems before they become, uh, you know, a bigger issue. And obviously with, with COVID, any kind of telemedicine, telehealth, anything like that is uh, becoming more popular. We also offer a variety of medication alarms, which are pretty simple to use. Um, we're actually in the process of testing a new one that's not on that uh, picture, but it's just a simple alarm. Eight o'clock, the buzzer goes off, it lights up, it makes a sound. You don't take your medicine out, an alert goes out to a family member, a daughter, son, whoever, grandma didn't take her medication, uh, 8 a.m. Something very simple so people know you're not taking your medication. Uh, you know, we are for, you know, any, typically we work with the elderly, um, anyone uh, disabled or recently discharged from hospital might be maybe more of a fall risk. Um, also work with behave, uh, you know, uh, behavioral health um, and um, you know, traumatic brain injury. It's not really big here, but in other parts of the country, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of uh, people who work with TBI, uh, uh, TBI patients uh, have, have been using us. And, and uh, I don't know why, it's just maybe more of a Midwest or a Southeastern thing where they just have more programs for people like that than maybe they do in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Um, <clears throat> I see a couple of, of false statistics that are big for us because of our full, uh, our fall detection pendants and, and our technology for that. I believe it was just fall prevention month or pro fall prevention week or something like that. Uh, I always get those things confused, but, um, you know, every 11 seconds, an adult is treating emergency room for a fall and, and every 11 seconds is, is always for me, um, uh, you know, if, if someone's falling that often, you know, in that time too, every, every moment counts, every second counts, any, every minute counts. So the quicker someone can get to, uh, get to that emergency room, the sooner, uh, the better their care is going to be and, and what's going to happen from there. So that's one of the reasons that, you know, people find our technology useful. It's going to cut down on how long you, how long till you get care. I, I mentioned, you know, our fall detection is just one of our pieces, uh, you know, this is our 
PERS lineup. Uh, we have a landline unit, cellular based unit, which only means runs off cell towers in the area. It doesn't mean you need a cell phone. It doesn't mean you need any kind of phone. You plug it into your wall and it's gonna search for cell networks in the area and call for help that way. Uh, very big for people who don't want a landline, very big for people who just don't want the hassle of having to plug it into a phone line. It takes less than 10 seconds to install, plug in and turn on. Um, and we have a variety of mobile products um, that will travel with you anywhere in the United States, uh, you know, anywhere you're traveling to. We have, uh, I'll get to it, but we have mobile products that are GPS based and cellular based, which go off cell towers. So our, our landline is our most basic, basic unit. It plugs into your phone line. You get the pen, you have a choice between a neck and a wrist pendant. Um, it, very simple, very efficient. It, it's been around forever. Just technology wise, it's always get, get smaller. That's about half the size of the uh, ones that I used to install when I started. Excuse me. See, uh, the cellular based unit, very similar, looks the same, um, same kind of pendants. Um, and again, a fall detection pendant will work with either of them. Now, a, a, a fall pendant is designed with the same technology as a Fitbit, essentially. So it's tracking your movement. It's not counting steps or anything like that, but it knows when you're moving and when you're not. And it will detect if something were to go wrong while you're moving. In other words, if I was wearing it correctly and I were to get up and trip over the end of my desk, it's going to know something's wrong. It's going to start to send the call. If I stand up and just continue to walk straight, it ends the call on its own. If I continue to stumble, it sends a call through. When that call goes through uh, to our operating operator, they're going to get a mon up on their monitor. It's going to say, Bob Elwood, fault detection. That means my fault detection went off. That means they're sending for help right away because they're assuming the worst. They're, if they can make contact with me, and I can say, I'm fine, I just fell, I need some help getting up, so be it. But uh, either way, they're working on the protocol to get help to that person because they found out, they just know that they've fallen. And it will work, again, with our cellular landline and our mobile units. Um, the, the biggest issue with it is people not wearing it right because um, it really needs to be kind of like tight around your neck. If it flops around too much or you're not wearing it around your neck, uh, it's not gonna work. I've done presentations where I've had it in my hand and we're shaking it and talking with my hands like I tend to do and I set it off. So it, it can be a little sensitive, but you know, it, it's, <clears throat> it is, you know, in, in a lot of cases, a lifesaver. Um, we offer mobile units, like I had mentioned, and, and this is our mobile LTE, which we've only had out for a couple of months. It's replaced our previous mobile unit. Um, and again, it can travel anywhere in the US. Um, it, its location is both this one, it, you can use GPS or cell uh, to track you. The difference being uh, a GPS-based tracker is tracking you every time you're on the go. A cellular-based tracker is only tracking you when you press the button to call for help, which uh, determines how, how much battery usage you're getting. Uh, obviously, the battery is going to drain a lot quicker if it's tra tracking you via GPS all the time. But if you're just pressing the button to call for help and that's when it tracks you, a fully charged battery, uh, battery stays charged a lot longer. Uh, and this also, also offers pendants, both wrist and neck to wear, uh, it, but you can also just press the button and talk into it and say, I'm, I'm in the park, I fall and I need help, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is our newer, also new, the on the go mobile. You see there's no pendant involved, which that means all, it's all you have to carry around with you is that unit. You carry it around, you can talk into it, you can have fall detection built into the pen, built into the unit. So all the, there's fall detection in there. It's it just essentially say built in, but it's automatically built in. We just activate it or don't activate it based on what the person wants. So again, if it's worn around the neck and you were to fall while you're going for a walk, while you're, uh, I don't know, anywhere, it's going to uh, send out a signal where you are. And with all our mobile products, we take the information yes. that we need if we have to find you, whether it's mm -hmm. physical description, uh, car description, uh, anything along those lines. So if something were to happen, they'd not only know they're looking for Mr. Smith, uh, but that you're in a park and that you might be driving a blue Ford and you are 5'7", 160, whatever. 
any kind of information that we can give them, we can so that they can and identify you. Um, one of the, well, before I get to the next one, one of the other um, things that we do is we offer multiple with a unit, not the case with the mobile LTE because there is no pendant, but with all our other pendants, so you get a wrist and a neck pendant. That means if you have two people living together, they are both, both essentially getting a pendant for the price of one unit which we've just started doing recently. And you know, a, a husband and wife living together, you get one unit, you pay one price, but you each get a pendant. Um, <clears throat> obviously with this where there is no pendant, it, it doesn't really matter, but it's just something I uh, forgot to make a slide to mention that. We also offer a Bell and a Bell Plus. These are just cellular based tracking units. So like I mentioned before, they could track you on cell towers with the other it's, that's all this is. There's yes involved with the bell. It's strictly a cellular based tracking unit. You press the button, it pings you based on the near cell towers. And again, they have information on what you look like, what your car is, uh, and, and whatnot. So it's an easy way to, uh, to locate you. Uh, the Bell Plus does work off a of GPS, not the cell, but also does have fault detection. So there, there's a little difference. And it, um, it's a, a 30 day battery life. Uh, if you're working just off cell towers. Again, five, six days, maybe seven, if you're using the GPS base, which is very important for someone who, if they're constantly on the go, you don't have to worry about them charging it. Um, we do off, you know, with all our mobile units, we have charging bases. We also send text alerts out if the battery's low. I get them all the time for my demo units. Uh, I think we send one when it's 50% and then 10%. I could be wrong on that. It could be 50 and 25, but uh, either way, we always send them out so that someone knows their, uh, their battery is low. Uh, we can also, you know, send them to say, you're getting these for uh, a family member, you get them as well. So it, not only are you notified in the case of an emergency, you can then call them to remind them, hey, I got the text alert that, you know, your battery is low. So, you know, it, it just anything that we can do to help with compliance with using these products, we do. <clears throat> We also offer a lockbox with all our products. Um, again, sort of a newer uh, offering, but it, uh, we offer it free. Uh, the way it would work is you lock the key in the lockbox, provide our call center with the combination and the location. So in the event of an emergency, uh, ambulance comes, they don't have to break in. They just open the box, take the key out, walk in and go for help. Uh, typically you're looking at maybe seven, $800 minimum to fix a door. So it just saves a little money in the event of an emergency. We also, I know some people have uh, keyless doors now where you just pop in a combination to open a door or a garage code. We take all that information as well if it's a means to get emergency services in the home without having to break in. So uh, any kind of information like that that can be provided while we're doing your paperwork, we'll take and we'll go to our call center. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, just, uh, you know, our medication management, again, uh, looking at it, that number said 68.9. I've always been saying 75% of medication uh, of admissions have something to do with some kind of medication mismanagement. Um, and, and, you know, this is our current solution, although we are testing in Ohio a newer product. Um, so hopefully we'll get if you know that works well for us, we'll uh, you know we'll start to market that and put that out there. But uh, it holds 28 doses of medication. It's customizable. You can put all your medication in there, but you have to fill it more often. If you know you're only worried if, if someone's with the senior in the mornings, but they're worried about them taking their night medication, you can just put 28 doses of the night medication in there. Either way, um, but it will importantly, communicate with the family, let them know medication wasn't taken in the morning or wasn't taken at night or whatever. Uh, it's locked. It does not look like much. I totally honest, it looks kind of flimsy, but you really have to beat the hell out of that thing to open it. Um, we've seen people who uh, were having issues with it and you know have dented it and smashed it and hit them with sledgehammers and still won't open. So it does not look like much, but it is pretty indestructible, which the marvel of modern science that that's indestructible, but it is. Um, and 
you know, I, I'm not the um, telehealth expert. We have a team who uh, can talk to you, talk to people in more detail about the science behind this uh, and the remote patient monitoring. But just a quick overview is uh, you get up in the morning, you j jump on a scale, uh, take your blood pressure through the reading goes through the cloud, through our base, uh, our cellular based medical alert, you know, personal emergency response unit is the, is the base for this as well. So uh, you have that in your home as well, uh, goes from there to the back end and your doctor's office and they can look to see that you gain, that that person just gained four pounds in a day. What, what's going on there? Are they retaining water? Um, is their blood pressure spiking? Whatever the case may be, they have access then to your records, what's going on. And then that gives the nurse, the doctor, whomever, the way to kind of figure out who needs the most care at that time, which helps them save time, help them with resources um, and go from there. Um, again, it's very simple, but kind of techy at the same time. Uh, but, you know, it, it works well and relatively new. We've been offering it for about two or three years now. Um, but any kind, and there's all kinds of, everything's customizable. So we can have, uh, you know, whatever could work best for a doctor's group, a, a nurse, a visiting nurse group or whomever, you know, we can work with them really well to just get what they need, including like uh, if they want to send us to do calls just to, to follow up with a reading or, uh, you know, what, you know, we can set it up. So like if you, your weight's out of a certain range, they'll call you right away and ask you some questions, you're experiencing any symptoms or, or whatever the case may be. So it, with all our products, we try to make things as custom. We don't like to say no. So we like to work with our provider and our partners to say, is this gonna work for you? Is this gonna work for you? You tell us what's gonna work. And if we can make things happen outside of our normal uh, business model or outside of our normal range, we're gonna try to work with you. And that's the um, essentially it. Uh, were there any questions? Any uh, anyone want any other information? Nobody has any questions. I have um, the live feed pulled up. We don't have any live questions, but there have been several people watching with us. One okay. thing I wanted to just mention is that I know a lot of the focus of some of these products and services is keeping people at home mm -hmm. for you know as long as possible. And I just know from my side of the business. I've referred a lot of people to Bob and to Connect America who are looking at a community, but maybe want to, like maybe the only thing that they truly need is medication management and very light medication management. And that's the defining thing between whether or not they're going to personal care, because if they need med management, they can't do that in independent living. So this is a good solution for them that can save them a lot of money. They get the socialization of a community with independent living, bringing in this kind of technology to add an extra level of safety so that they can age in place in the community too. So I've used it that way and not just for med management, but for, you know, a lot of the different things that Connect America offers. So it's, it goes beyond even just staying at your, at your home. Mm -hmm. It can age in place in the IL too. Wendy, do you have a question? You raise your hand. I do. Um, and thank you. That was a great presentation because I'm with you, Allie. We have seen more people wishing to remain home or even moving from a community to home. And to be able to put in a support service for them that can help with their safety is obviously paramount to their success in staying there. Now, we are, we are now seeing a trend going on where um, it seems like more folks now are going back to look at the, the senior living options. But I think to have um, a service like this in place um, keeps them in that. We always said our mission was to keep people where they wanted to be, which typically was going to be in a home environment. So anything that's helpful in doing that um, obviously is is hugely beneficial. I was wondering, do you reach out a lot through doctor's offices or Department of Aging, or how do you connect to let people know everything that you do? Um, we do a lot of um Almost all, in fact, all but one uh, area agency on aging in the state uh, we work closely with. Uh, I, I don't know why that one won't take our information or, or, or let me speak. Mm -hmm. Case manager. Only one. <laughs> only one. What is it? Six, I, know, six, one. <laughs> so I forget how many AAAs there are. But yeah. uh, And that, that goes back to before me. So the guy who, who, whose job I took a couple of years ago, he might have been a jerk for all I know. I don't know. But uh, they do a lot of work with them. We're, we're active with all the MCOs. Um, 
And, you know, not so, some doctor's offices, uh, but a lot of home care companies, uh, visiting nurse groups, um, independent living, um, you know. I was thinking like care management groups or. Yeah, care management groups. Uh, yeah, and, based primary care, like any of those services where they're seeing people yeah. at home. Really, just about anyone who works with the scene work with seniors or anyone in our population. Um, we, we, we've tried to partner with, or at least you know, we're in communication with about working together. So, uh, you know, whether it's part of someone's care plan, yeah, um, you know, and if there's something we're not currently doing, like I said, we'll kind of look at any option and, and take any uh, any situation, see if we can work somehow with someone. We don't like, we don't like to say no. Bob, I have a question. Um, I'm Tim Zibler with Camelot Auction House. We, I, I work with a lot of clients that have decided they're going to downsize, and in the interim, they need to sell some of the things in their home. Mm -hmm. But often, it's the family driving them. A lot of times, their children don't live locally, and they kind of discover that the parent, you know, they're visiting. It sounds fine on the phone. Mom sounds fine on the phone. But when they, they go to stay with her for a week, they get scared of her even turning on the stove, that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, there's a, there's a time between when they're moving and when they're there. How does it work in terms of if you just need help for three months or four months? Is it a, is it a commitment that's an extended commitment or have you, have you, you kind of can handle that situation pretty well too? Yeah, we, we are used to that. That's why there is no commitment. It's month to month with all our products. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if that were be were to be the case, you know, three months, four months, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Um, there's no commitment on the user's end. Um, we have sometimes if, if we're working with like a home care company or something like that, we have a contract with them, but never with the user. They just get the product, you know, rent it for a couple of months, pay the rental fee. And if they don't need it after three months, because they're moving in with someone or going, send it right back. And we have a pretty seamless uh, process in place. We'll under normal circumstances, we used to just mail a box out right away, prepaid stamp, put it in, mail it back. We've stopped doing the, the box because our uh, operations people are working from home. So they just would send out a uh, prepackaged label to put on uh, and, you know, they just have to put it back in any kind of box and mail it back to us. So, and, you know, it, we know that some people aren't going to use them very well. Thank you. Anybody else have questions for, um, oh, Amy, Amy, raise your hand. Amy, you have a question? Sure. Hi, Amy Gustatis. Um, I'm a care manager uh, specializing in the medical side of things. Um, can you maybe share with us some of the uh, typical issues that you have in terms of troubleshooting? Like, where do you see this, uh, I guess, when are you able to make something successful? When do you think this is sort of beyond, you know, helping the family kind of thing? You mean troubleshooting like problems with the some um, problems some might be having using the products or? I, I, I guess maybe I should phrase it differently. Can you help me understand the learning curve? Like, is there, uh, you know, for for some uh, patients, if you will, or some clients, I would think this might be a little bit beyond their reach because of cognitive issues. Or do you like? Is there a, maybe a little bit of a learning curve for the the people who you work with? How do you yeah. how do you work through that? Like, do you provide on site assistance, or maybe you can give some scenarios about how you work? Sure. That. Um, typically, we would help uh, with the installation um, of it to make sure it's working properly. Uh, for a while, though, we weren't obviously sending people into the homes, uh, and we would talk over the phone to get them uh, how to work it. Uh, but we're we're pretty good at um, being able to have our tech department call if there are issues. And if people are having trouble not using it, um, or should I say like hitting the button by mistake, that, that's never an issue. Some seniors do kind of get in their head that if they press the button by mistake on Tuesday and they have an emergency on Thursday, they're not gonna answer the phone because they pressed it by mistake two days ago. And that's you know, not the case. Um, but you know, we provide all kinds of information. And you know, when we partner with a group, a home care company or, or AAA or whomever, we really work on educating their staff as well on what our products are, how they work. And, and that way they have two kind you know, they can reach out to me, they can reach out to a case manager from 
AAA or whomever, and we all can work through how to get them comfortable using the products. Because the one thing that is absolutely certain about these products is if you don't use them, they're not gonna work. So we, we need to have that level in the senior to know, to be comfortable using it, uh, to test it. We recommend testing it frequently just to make sure you know how to use it, just to make sure it's gonna work. Uh, you know, our range is usually, about, it's gonna work about 600 yards. So uh, from the unit. So, you know, we'll, we'll tell people if they have a larger house to, to try it on the far end of the house from the unit, just to make sure that call goes through. Uh, and if it doesn't, to let us know, and, you know, we will you know, troubleshoot however we can uh, to make sure that person's comfortable using it and it's working properly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I'm good. Bob, thank you very much. I think this is really great because I think sometimes it's easy to not really understand the whole scope of everything that you guys offer and it's big. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of stuff. Yeah, it's thank a you lot so well, when I started, we had two products and now we have a whole array of things and, you know, it's kind of hard. It's good to always talk to people to like refresh myself, you know, like <laughs> a new mobile product, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. But no, just, uh, no, it was great to, to you know, share what we do. And again, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in being uh, a local, you know, a local company with a national reach. So anytime we can help, especially people in this area, we, we go out of our way. Good. Well, anybody that's watching now here on Zoom or live on Facebook right now, if you know of colleagues or friends or clients that might benefit from it, it's going to be posted on our senior serving professionals page as like a, a video that was live. So you can share or tag them in that. Um, and if you have questions for Bob, I know his contact information is here, but you can also just ask him on there as well. Okie dokie. It was good to see you guys. Bob, thank you again. Thank you. All right, everybody have a good day. See you Bye. soon. Thank you. Bye.